Hello, um, I'm Mar- Martin, and I'm an Inkscape developer, and I just heard that uh, Canva acquired um, Affinity, uh, like, Affinity by Serif. Um, and I wanted to, to lay down some of my thoughts, but also kind of invite Affinity users who want something different to get involved. Um, but I'll explain. So when when Adobe moved to subscriptions, um, there was two kinds of responses. People who invested heavily into Inkscape, both into learning how to use it and also um, all of the, the necessary investments to improve Inkscape so that it would fill some of the gaps that Inkscape had with some of the functionality and workflows that people were used to using with um, Adobe Illustrator. And um, then there was a whole bunch of people who jumped to Affinity Designer. Um, At the time, Affinity seemed like a good bet, but from the free software perspective, from the open source perspective, um, proprietary software is always dangerous. It always has the ability well, not ability, tendency even, to, uh, to quote Curry Dr. O um, in Shitify, that is to become worse and to tighten the thumb screws upon users to, to take more money out of the system. Um, this is because users don't have any ownership over the software. Um, they will think that they do because they buy it and they think that that and it gives them ownership, but it, I don't mean I don't mean just being able to use it. I mean fundamentally owning the software. That means to be able to to modify it, to be able to see how it works, to be able to de- make decisions about how, what bugs get fixed and and who to employ and to to actually fix it for you. Um, and proprietary software always tends towards um, greater degrees of control and manipulation of users. Um, simply because it's possible. And there's no restrictions on companies who want to do that. Regulation for software software is sadly very, very lax. So the free and open source world, we tend to think that people should have uh, fundamental rights when it comes to software. And um, when Adobe moved to being a subscription, we found ourselves um, being on the end of, of, of users who wanted to move to better tools And um, one of the things that we wanted to do with that attention was uh, ask users what it is that we wanted to prioritize for their workflows, like things that needed to be fixed, things that needed to work better, um, user interfaces that needed to be designed in a more friendly way, or at least optionally were reconfigurable. Um, A good example is I added a modifiers preferences so that you can actually change the way the, the control shift and alt keys work um, to be like Adobe Illustrator. And this helps pe- people who are unfamiliar with how Inkscape's Coral Draw inspired uh, modifiers work um, use Inkscape better. Um, that work came out of um, that um, crisis, I would say. Now, um, the acquisition of Affinity hasn't done anything. Uh, to Affinity Designer. So I don't think there's going to be a whole bunch of new Inkscape users anytime soon. Um, But people are already very worried about the direction that Canva will take the Affinity product suite. And they're right to be worried because I think they've recognized the fact that their software rights are not particularly strong um, and many companies do in in Shetify. Um, You know, they've seen it before. It's becoming a a well-worn pattern now. Um, but we have time in the Inkscape project to think about some of the things that Affinity users uh, would like to see in Inkscape. Uh, things that, that uh, we should change, things that we should adopt, uh, or just things that we should improve. Um, there are some easy stuff, like maybe there are buttons that could work in a different way. Um, user experience cleanups, that sort of thing. And then there's harder things like speed improvements, uh, particular operating systems. Um, like I don't think we could support iPad, for example, Um, But we should take the opportunity now to start thinking about ways in which we can make Inkscape uh, available to the people who are going to find themselves either being forced to subscribe to Affinity or are going to be forced to use AI tools that they don't want in their artworks um, or any of the other myriad problems that come with uh, VC-funded software development models. 
Um, I know most of the people that watch my videos are going to be Inkscape users. So you guys may not be the right people uh, to ask this, but if you are an Affinity Designer user um, and you think, and you also use Inkscape, um, I think it's fair to say, do you think you could comment on this video about some of the things that you think that Inkscape should change uh, or tweak in order to be more comfortable to Affinity Designer users who we may end up uh, needing to um, accommodate in the future. Um, and if you're not an Affinity Designer user, um, comment about your thoughts on the acquisition. Uh, tell me about what you think about free, free, free and open source and, and how it competes or does not compete properly with uh, you know millions and millions of dollars that seemingly get spent on developing these uh, these other tools. And um, you know there, there has to be a way for us to sort out this uh, software paradox where we need users to have both ownership and also we need to have the resources to be able to build it. Um, those two things are not meeting in the middle right now and we need to somehow figure that out. So anyway, enough blathering from me. Thank you for watching this video and I'll be sharing some of the stuff that I've been developing in future videos.